Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. And today I'm using Manga Studio 5EX to uh, create what I would consider more of like uh, children's book type work or, you know, just more of a um, animated kind of fun friendly style. Uh, I try to practice this every now and then just because uh, I don't get a lot of this type of work, but I'd love to at some point in my career. Uh, so I always go back to it. And it's just fun, you know, it's it's a nice break from the uh, more intense science fiction stuff that I do or whatever. I guess it's still science fiction, but it's uh, just more fun and friendly. So just to explain the process, I uh, start off by throwing in that quick little square and I distort it into place. You can do that by hitting Command Shift T. And I distort it into place just to give myself a quick plane of perspective uh, versus a blank white canvas. And then I take the uh, pencil tool and I just start sketching on a new layer. And all I know at this stage is that I wanted something kind of silly, goofy, but, you know, you know, monster or whatever. Uh, but a, like a friendly monster, you know. So I want to give him this kind of bubbly look. And obviously I give him a sucker there because, you know, anybody with a, a sucker is obviously friendly. Uh, just kidding. That's probably not a good thing to live by. <laughs> not everybody with the sucker is friendly. Um, so at any rate, just kind of, you know, scribbling in the uh, concept and then I go back and refine it with another layer. Uh, something that's more, um, again, cartoony and, and just kind of laid back. Uh, I don't really need as many layers to refine it um, generally. It depends on what I'm going for, I guess, and how good of an idea I have in my mind before I get started. Um, but... Generally just a couple sketch layers and then a refinement layer of inking is uh, plenty for something like this in my opinion. Uh, again, it's it's depending on what style you're going for for the end result. Um, so I just start to clean it up. Add, if you notice, I'm adding a little bit more stylized lines and, and more wrinkles and a little bit of texture in the toenails there. And just, just little cues to uh, give myself for the next stage of inking and then the final... Uh, final stage of adding color um, and you know the reason why I like doing this uh, particular style is that these um, these lines actually give me all the selection layers that I need as well um, which isn't much on something like this you can pretty much just paint behind the lines kind of thing but I still uh, find using selections in certain areas really help <clears throat> excuse me so I'll just you know pinballing around and and adding in little bits of uh, detail, trying to still, you know, figure out exactly how I want the head shape and the face shape to look, but I think that's pretty much uh, what I was going after, just something that looked, I don't know, like a mix between a hippopotamus and a dinosaur or something, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, and then I get mad because I try to draw a circle there and I can't, so I end up going to the tools, so... Yeah, a bit of a cheat there. And remember, Command-Shift-T. If you hit Command-T, I always add something like that on a new layer. If I hit Command-T, it'll it'll just rescale uh, proportionally. But if you hit Command-Shift-T, you can um, distort it into place, which is really useful for ovals and things like that. Yeah, so this character, uh, which I'm probably going to dub something like Dino Hippopotamus or something. Um, maybe he's a lost breed of... Uh, dinosaur or hippopotamus uh, I guess we haven't lost a hippopotamus not yet anyways so uh, just a lost breed of of uh, dinosaur you know, he's been mistaken for the Loch Ness monster a few times or whatever so yeah so just keep scribbling around there now I'm actually uh, inking you know trying to uh, beef up the line work uh, something that I, I need to do more of because um, I guess because the style I think is so great when you see like really good uh, heavy line work and it's done well. Uh, I just think it, it really makes the uh, illustration kind of stand out and look really cool. Gives it a unique style. Um, I just kind of cheat and do this fat line around everything which I probably shouldn't. But um, I think I was still trying to figure out what style I was going to do for the paintwork. So there you see I use the selection tool, I shrink the selection behind the line work and then do a flood fill of that kind of bluish gray color. And then I immediately start to do a gradient in the uh, background because I, like, uh, I don't like painting against white anymore. I, I've kind of gotten away from that as of late. 
So yeah, so here I start with the soft brush. I'm trying to designate some kind of value in the background or color in the background. And I know I'm, wa I'm wanting him, uh, excuse me, I'm wanting him sitting on kind of a patch of grass. So I end up uh, kind of filling that in real quick and smudging the grass around uh, with the smudge tool set to finger, uh, finger or fingertip, I can't remember. And uh, okay, I lock transparency here for the color, and then I get in with the soft brush and start defining uh, some shadow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, you know, I just essentially just keep repeating this process of like shading. Uh, you'll see I add some hard edge shadows later, but you can do a lot of uh, you know the fun kind of laid back stuff with the soft brush because it's just kind of lends itself to that. Um, style I think which you know I've seen it done both ways it doesn't matter there it's really whatever you you know you deem worthy in your process um, so here just kind of adding a bit of a lighter tone in there trying to get a bit of bounce light into the uh, the edging of the arms and the tail and stuff like that I gotta always remember that skin uh, even dino hippopotamus skin is reflective so you got to get that little bit of bounce light in there. And here I start finger, uh, finger, filling in the fingernails. Can't talk today. <clears throat> and uh, just basically doing this all over, like each layer over top, but then everything below, below the line work layer. Uh, and if you just solid fill the initial color in, then you can lock transparency and paint freely within the confinements of that area. So that's pretty much how I paint and how I create in Manga Studio almost uh, entirely now. Um, and then at the end, I'll add some other effects over top, kind of just uh, um, softly over top of everything. But for the most part, the beginning stages, of especially this type of illustration, I'll use that solid fill, lock transparency, paint within. Um, I'm really a big fan of that, uh, that way of painting. It seems quick. I can edit my work really well that way, and uh, yeah, just seems to be easy. So playing around with the toenails, trying to make them look a little bit like a bone texture. Um, don't know that I really get that right on that particular part, but you know, I go for it anyways. And just keep sampling uh, new tones and dropping them in there and seeing what they look like and going from there. So yeah, uh, I really, like I said before, I really enjoy doing stuff like this because it's a nice break from the traditional style that I do. Uh, there, I'm using the highlight to punch up a uh, light source a little bit more. Um, and it's uh, it's a highly sellable type style as well. You know, like obviously children's books, uh, a lot of web design stuff looks pretty uh, simplified like this. Um, I would say it's more sellable than the style I like doing, which is more of a gruesome kind of science fiction fantasy, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know what to call it really, you know, I love comics and things like that obviously, but, so I traditionally do this darker style, and I think it's it's a lot smaller of a demographic that it's uh, marketable to, so besides this type of stuff being real fun to do, I think it's highly important, you know, uh, to add to your portfolio and some people you know I know think the opposite uh, where they say that you shouldn't have too many styles in your portfolio and I get that um, I'm sure a lot of schools are going to tell you that and things like that but um, but I, I don't know I, to me I think it makes me a little bit more versatile as an artist and and I'm doing it naturally I'm not forcing myself to learn this style I actually just like doing this so I guess I guess that's what it really boils down to. Are you naturally somebody that likes to do a variety of styles, or do you find yourself struggling to do anything but the one style that you really uh, admire? And if that's the case, then I would say go for your your strong suit and whatever you're really passionate about, and only do that. But if you find that it's easy to segue into other styles, I would say, yeah. I mean, to me, it would make you more uh, attractive to art buyers, but. Again, these are just my opinions. I, I have no real way to back that up because uh, I don't do a whole lot of this style and, and sell it. I, I get a little bit of this with my uh, storyboard work, but not much. It's uh, it's a little bit more of a uh, different take on on that type of stuff. 
but every now and then I'll get a fun little project like this. So, yeah, so uh, if you notice too, so I don't leave anything out, if you see the selection pop up, the way I'm getting that quick selection is clicking on the layer, right clicking, and going select from layer. Uh, another great thing about painting in all your solid areas uh, first is that you can create selections from them really effectively, really quickly and easily. So, um, which is important as you progress through your painting because you want to be able to jump in and edit certain elements of your work. Um, the reason why you see a bunch of layers popping up over there is I'm painting behind and in front of even the character at this point. So parts of the grass I want to be behind the character, parts I want to be in front of his big flat feet there. And, uh, you know, so I, I have to kind of keep those layers to go before or in front of and behind of to do that. And then I'll create a selection like right there, and then I can delete even those, that shadow I just added. So it just pushed it right behind the character, basically, uh, but in front of the grass. So there's just, you know, there's ways to accomplish that with your layers and your selections and all that fun stuff. So yeah, painting his, uh, his lollipop there. I don't know where he got that, but maybe there's a lollipop store around the corner. I don't know. But yeah, um, trying to make sure I, I kind of approach uh, different aspects of this. Um, sorry that I always have to time lapse some of these. Um, and the reason for that is because it's a little bit easier for me to narrate sometimes uh, over top after I've focused on creating the artwork. So I find that when I create some of the artwork and I'm narrating during the process that I miss things or I, the art, and I guess that I, I don't miss things, that the artwork doesn't come out as well. Um, this way I can focus on creating the artwork and then go back and narrate over top. So I know that different people on the channel here like different things, uh, but that's why I wanted to make mention of that, that basically, you know, I'm trying to accommodate a lot of people and obviously you can't make everybody happy at the same time. So, so I try to do a variety of videos here when I can. So yeah, just uh, sketching in some of the background line work there, uh, trying to get a feel for it. Uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just didn't want to do just another character. Um, it's real easy uh, to get in the habit of just doing that, and I don't want to fill up my portfolio with just characters. I want to show that, you know, although my backgrounds aren't uh, uh, perfect by any means, I can I can do some background work as well. And you have to. I mean, if you're going to illustrate a full story, you've got to have backgrounds. So, so yeah, just creating selections here, uh, painting in some solid tones to the uh, the rock, and then using the smooth watercolor brush inside of Manga here to brush in some uh, texture and paint at the same time. I kind of started going in this one direction where I wanted these these rocks, just because rocks were really easy to do, and I, you know, I kind of lean lean on them. I lean on rocks because um, they can withstand my weight. But so it's it's easy to go to those, but it's it's a bad habit to get into. So you see, I kind of I kind of see that, and I go, wait a second, there's this mushroom, this patch of grass. Uh, it's probably not going to be out growing by a bunch of rocks. So you know, <laughs> looks like he's sitting in uh, out in Arizona somewhere, and there's mushrooms and a patch of grass. So I end up uh, kind of um, adjusting that and adding some. Uh, what I was going for, kind of some mossy stuff over top here in a bit. But it's good because it shows you, you know, you can paint something and then change directions in a digital painting pretty quickly and just paint over top. It's really not that bad. Um, you know, I use the smooth watercolor brush here to kind of start uh, creating this layer effect of clouds. I almost think of these like these types of clouds where you're like uh, doing the really cheesy props on a stage, you know, you just kind of cut them out of a uh, poster board or something and, and tie them to strings and dangle them behind the uh, actor. So, but yeah, that smooth watercolor is like an amazing brush. I'm really digging it. So yeah, there's my cheesy cartoony clouds. Take all of a couple seconds or minutes to produce. So, and I'm toggling that sketch line on and off a bit because I'm still trying to look into the background a bit and see, okay, what's what's wrong with this? You know, let me let me paint my mushrooms over here and maybe I can figure out what's uh, what's not gelling right. 
So again, solid fill. I used the highlight brush, or actually I don't know if I did, but the airbrush to um, punch up the light source and the dark source. Sounds gruesome. Um, the dark, uh, the shadow, anyways. <laughs> and then I put another layer behind it, solid fill that with this kind of um, brownish gold, reddish brown, I don't know. Um, and then I'm like, ah, you know what? I think I want lines around this. So I actually did that in reverse. I would generally do the lines first. Um, and, and the reason being is I kind of still was wondering whether or not I was going to take this to look like a more of a painterly piece. And in which case you blend out all your line work and, and just keep uh, adding uh, transitions of tone. But then I decided, no, you know what? I like the line work. I like that uh, more animated feel that it gives to the piece. So I'm going to go ahead and go with line work on this one. And I, I do both. I, I go back and forth because uh, they're just different styles. And I, I like to, again, I like to be versatile. I like to have a couple different things in my uh, my uh, portfolio for what I can do there. So sometimes I'll go with lines. Sometimes I'll go with just painterly. Sometimes I'll just, you know, just do pencil, whatever. So uh, here's another effect I've been doing more of. So if you notice, I, I created a selection with the bottom part of that mushroom, and then I solid filled that shadow that kind of wraps down the, ba the base of the mushroom. I'll do it again on this next one so you can see. Um, but then what I do is I turn the opacity down and I soft erase just part of it. And I really like the effect that yields. So it allows you to throw in some quick uh, hard edge shadows. I actually did it under his hand there as well. And uh, just that little bit you soft erase to the one side kind of gives it a little bit more realism, I think. And uh, just another area of interest in the work. And uh, it's really easy and effective to do. So especially in Manga, where, like I said, you can create selections so quickly off your flat layers. Um, so adding things like that is a, a no-brainer. It's just not hard to do. And you can use that with your blending modes or combined modes. I think they're called Manga. Um, and you can just throw in a color with that effect and you can adjust your blending modes uh, on top of controlling your opacity. So once you start, you'll see I'm about to do it here, but once you start to really combine all those different effects just the right way, your work will get not only uh, look a lot cooler, it'll become a lot easier to produce. You'll start to think of all these workarounds and uh, things that expedite your process because you're like, oh, I don't have to paint that on the initial layer, then blend it and, and possibly make a mistake. I can just quickly create a selection, paint it over top, control the effect, move on. And, and it just makes your work a lot easier to edit. So here, like I said, I, I wanted some kind of mossy effect. I got these little blurred brushes, uh, blurred edges, blurred spray brushes inside of Manga. And they're good for little effects like this. I got to create uh, some new custom ones. I'm actually in the process of uh, developing some of those now. And, you know, things like this are just awesome because even though I <laughs> kind of struggle at first, cause I'm like, I should have pulled reference. Like, what does moss look like? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't eat it very often. So, um, <laughs> and obviously anything I don't eat, I have no clue what it looks like. But, um, so I, I start brushing this in at first I'm like oh man I think I'm messing this up and I think I just ruined my piece <laughs> which happens at times unfortunately uh, not ruined it just delete the layer and try again but but I just kept going with it and I don't know that it came out 100% but I just you know I keep sizing the brush up and down the particle size of the brush um, and the size of the brush uh, which affects it really neat you can actually control the size of the particle spray and the brush itself so it's it's not like a lot of brushes where you size them down and the brush uh, kind of just condenses down in one way. There's two ways to adjust this particular brush, which is really nice. So I just get in there and I keep uh, painting it back and forth with dark, light, and then a punched up light source at the very end to try to get, you know, I didn't want some hyper realistic moss, you know, obviously for this type of piece, but I wanted it to be just... Uh, cool enough where it doesn't look like I just uh, didn't try hard enough or something, you know, like I just kind of flew through it. Um, you know, and, and something I'd recommend with stuff like this, if you do get in the habit and you're just sitting there 
kind of painting grass, painting moss, painting any uh, number of foliage type textures, be sure to save them. You know, if you're just in that mood to paint that type of stuff, paint it on a blank canvas or, or whatever on another layer um, and, and save it because you can really reuse that stuff quite easily. Just as easily as I could have just grabbed a picture of moss and kind of manipulated it into my picture here. But I wanted this to be just something I created purely from imagination. So uh, that was the uh, the purpose of this one. Just to have just to have fun, really, and uh, add another uh, thing to my portfolio. So yeah, so now I'm still trying to get the grass right. It just looks a little plain Jane. It looks silly that there's only one small patch of grass under our creature here, but hey, maybe you know he found it and was like, that looks like a really cool place to sit. Uh, and then I add another layer. I, I start thinking, ah, oh, those the background needs a little bit of line work because it looks. Uh, looks out of place to everything else I've done. So I just add another layer and uh, start to ink in some more loose lines. And, you know, keep it in mind that I'm not tracing everything. I'm just kind of uh, in and out, dancing around the, uh, the shapes. Um, I think that helps to show stuff's more in the background. So if you notice, I got like a nice fat line around him because I want him to be really up front and in the foreground second thickest line on the uh, mushrooms and then uh, the broken up lines in the background and then some little spots and stuff like that just some final little tweaks I'm trying to uh, just give him a little bit more he just he still looks a touch plain but I don't know I end up accepting that fact and just moving on but so yeah so that's uh, that's pretty much how I would do more of an animated kind of cartoon uh, character uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below and what you'd like to see in the future. And uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, especially if you found the video helpful. Uh, it helps me progress the channel, which is nice, and uh, I can keep bringing you new content all the time, which I love doing. So, And I'm currently putting out one to two videos a week on the channel here, so be sure to stop on back if you don't mind. And there'll be uh, links in the description box below for things like my digital content, uh, other videos, and other ways to support the channel, uh, which I greatly appreciate. Anything helps just so I can keep, uh, keep on keeping on, keep making this stuff and keep helping other artists uh, grow their abilities. And if you can't, don't worry because I'm still going to share stuff anyways. It's just a added bonus. So yeah, so just uh, I keep tweaking it, adding little shadows and nips and tucks and get to the final piece and say la vie. So thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.